Hello, Goldzoid here, and today I'm going to be showing you my thermoelectric uh, water chiller. There, got the name. Perfect. Um, I keep screwing that up in the practices for this. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, this is my new current clamp. Uh, it's a multimeter, and if you put a wire through here, it measures current going through the water. Yeah, and it also is a thermometer that measures even, like, it's a K-type, so it can run with liquid nitrogen and everything, so I'm really happy with this thing. And I'll be using it to show you the functions of the cooler. So what what is the actual cooler? So a thermoelectric cooler. You know what? Let's just go look at the thing. Um, there's no point looking at me while I can talk about this while you're looking at it. Um, again, sorry for the camera work. I do all my camera work on my own. And I don't have, a, like, a monitor on top of the camera stand, which I should get. I'm probably going to get a USB screen for that. Um, yeah, so this is it. This monstrosity right here. Everything on this wooden frame. Um, there's a mess of cables coming out the bottom of it, because I just finished it, and I just turned it on today. So I'm super happy that it even boots, because, well, there was never really any doubts that it would start up, but there was... You know, it's kind of iffy with these things. Um, so, I have to thank EK for supporting this project, because, like, I got a discount on the fittings, on the pump, on the everything. Like, basically all the water cooling stuff, I have a discount from EK on that. So, huge thanks to them for, like, supporting me with that, because otherwise I wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to do this for a very long time. Um, I would have had to wait longer to do this. Um, yeah, and so basically what this is, it uses thermoelectric uh, cooling modules, which are sandwiched between the heat sink here, right, these heat sinks. These are actually two heat sinks. This is not one big heat sink, but let me just the camera to show you. The camera works about to get much, much worse. So, yeah, I apologize for that. So as you can see, there's two heat sinks. There's a push pole set up for optimal cooling, right? And here's another two heat sink set up. Each of those heat sink has to cool one thermoelectric uh, cooling module. This camera work is terrible. Um, each of those heat sinks has to um, cool a single 100 watt thermoelectric cooler module, or Peltier is the other name you can call it, um, and also any heat load that goes into the tank. Um, so basically, each of these should be dissipating about 150 watts. That's what it's designed for. Um, so 300 watts per tower. I do believe that you could run it for um, not 400 watts. You can't do that. But you could run it at, say, 350 watts per tower. But at that point, the whole system is completely pointless because the, thermo like, the water temperature is no longer long enough to make this worthwhile. So yeah, it's powered by G450M, um, which is a modular bronze power supply from Cooler Master. It's nice and cheap, and it's modular, which makes me have to deal with slightly less cables. No SATA, no that stuff. Um, the techs are running off of 12 volts. They pull up around basically 100 watts each. And yeah, there's the pump, which is a uh, for DCP 4.0 from EK, which is a rebrand of some other, other pump. I don't know what pump the rebranded is off, but it's pretty good. It pushes up to 800 liters per hour um, with no restriction. I have no idea how much it pushes, but these are just two EK RAM blocks down here, which you can sort of see, right? EK RAM blocks and this CPU block. So yeah, this is pretty low restriction as a loop, as far as like being a loop goes, because this isn't even like radiator level um, amounts of piping. I think this is dripping. Yeah, now the only downside is that the tubing is just some stuff I bought and it's slightly wrong size, so yeah, I don't trust this 100% yet. But let's just start it up, uh, let's just start it up because you'll be really surprised how freaking quiet this is. Alright, like I have a face change cooler which uses a compressor and that thing is loud, like really loud. Let's just start this up. And what? Oh, I guess the, yeah, the shorting on the, so obviously ATX power supply and the thing I was using to short it out just fell out, and I have no idea where it went. 
Oh well, I'm just gonna go get something to short it out again. No. Why don't I just have any bare wire somewhere? There we go. Oh, that's not fair. Um, yeah, boy. Give me a sec. Uh, why now? Um, okay, give me a, a couple more seconds. Need to get this wire stripped. Alright, this should start off. So, yeah, um, is this turned on? Okay, it's off. Good. Don't want to shock myself right now. So, not like there's any hazard to me, but, you know, it would be kind of surprising if it just turned on while I was holding, so, yeah. And I don't want to break anything, so it's better if it's off. There. So if you didn't know how to get a ATX power supply to start up um, without anything, without a motherboard, you just short the green wire to a black wire. Black is for ground, green is for startup. So that's what I did. Let's see. Now let's boot this thing up. There. And yeah, it has a slight turn on, and then it's, like, it's really quiet. Like, I'll bring you all the way up right, right to the fans. This is quieter than my main computer. This whole setup, it's quieter than my main computer, so that's really great. Um, it goes down to, now, I, I tested the temperature capabilities of this thing, um, and it went down, I pulled it down to around 8 degrees water temperature. I didn't go below that because I started getting condensation, and I don't have it fully, like, insulated and everything and set up for that yet. So, yeah, I just sort of stopped there. But right now it's like 20 degrees in the room. I don't know how much the water temperature is. Okay, it's below that. The water is pretty cold. Um, I'm just gonna get the thermometer. Uh. Right, and this thing actually pulls only about 91 watts per tech. The pump is 20 watts. So the 450 watt power supply is only really supplying like 380 right now. Of course, once you put a heat load on it, it works a little bit harder because the thermoelectric coolers start pulling a little more power once they warm up. So let's get this set up for temperature. And I need to open up the reservoir, so I'll just quickly get the tool for that. Sorry again. Now, if I don't forget a million things for video, it isn't my video. How oh, long box! There we go. So I'll just open up the kill port and oh yeah, this is like so the great thing is it cools down really quickly initially. Right? So it drops really quickly from say 20 what ambient room temperature down, it drops really quick. But after that it slows down as it goes lower and lower and lower. Because the thermoelectric coolers work less and less and less. But this is just to show you that's room temperature. It's 28 degrees in here. Partially because of this thing. This thing dumps 400 watts of heat into the room, so that's not great. Um, and you know, any kind of phase change setup is going to be pretty power hungry. Well, cold, cold cooling setup is going to be pretty power hungry. Yeah, and water temperature is 19. And let's hope this probe just stays in there. There. I don't know. Can you see it? I'll try to get it as close to the... Actually, I'll bring it closer to it. There. That should be legible. And as you can... No, you can't see it. There. Get the... There, see? So the water temperature is dropping, so it's 17. Give it a second and it'll shoot ahead 17.5. There, 17.5, and it'll just keep going down and down and down until it equalizes. I don't know when that happens. I stopped it before I started getting serious condensation, which happened at around 8 degrees water temperature. So yeah, it can probably go below that. It slows down as it gets that low. So right now we're at 17 degrees, and as you can see, it keeps dropping. 
Um, I designed it to run around 5 to 10 degrees with a 200 watt load, so that would be like an i7-4790K at 5-ish gigahertz, at like 1.45 volts. So yeah, this can take a, quite a bit of heat. Um, and basically the benefit of this is, is uh, if you compare this to my main water cooler on my main system, which uses a 360 uh, millimeter radiator with 2000 RPM fans, uh, first of all, this thing's quieter. Second of all, this thing has lower water temperature, like significantly lower water temperature. That is hitting like five degrees above ambient. So it might be at like 33, 32, 30-ish 30 um, water temperature. Whereas this thing is hitting already 15 degrees water temperature. So yeah, th this is really great. The only problem is it pulls a ton of power and it takes some time to cool down, so you can't just start it, like, you kind of need to let the computer cool down a little, then start it up, and then you can run this. But yeah, unlike, say, a proper phase change setup, this is also much, much smaller than, like, a phase change setup, so I'll just put this down here. And it's also quite light, it's not that heavy, because you don't have a compressor, you don't have a condenser coil, you don't have a heat exchanger, um, because all of your cooling basically happens in these two, in these four heat sinks. Um, these each weigh about 600 or 700 grams, I think. Power supply is maybe a kilo. This might be, um, you know, so the whole thing weighs under 10 kilos, which is great because I do have a phase change cooler, which is significantly more powerful than this thing. Um, it does about 500 watts at around the same temp water temperature, but. Yeah, you know, this is way, way lighter, so it's actually easy to lift off. There. It's really light, so that thing is insanely heavy. I had to get a table just for it because it's kind of huge compared to this. Um, this isn't that big. So there are benefits, there are costs and benefits. Also, this is way cheaper than phase changing. You can be, com it's safer to do um, if you don't have any idea what you're doing as far as doing um, phase change cooling setups goes. So basically all you need to know is how to hook up a couple of wires and then thermal paste. Oh, and a bunch of zip ties. And you can build one of these and it'll get you sub ambient water temperature. And we're already at 13 degrees. So yeah, this goes down quickly at the start. At around 10 degrees it starts leveling off. Yeah, now it's sort of waving up and down. And then all the water just hits this block here. And this block is like cold to the touch. Oh, and we're already getting condensation. So yeah, um, I'm going to have to turn this off pretty soon because, yeah, there's condensation on that. But I'll just show you that the water block already is so cold that, all right, and if I put my finger on it, and just, I don't know if this will show up on the camera, but yeah, you see, like my finger leaves a line behind it. So yeah, it does get really cold really quickly. Not wet in, like, it's not wet yet, like, properly wet, but if I let it run it, run for a bit, it'll start getting, like, proper water droplets on there. So, yeah, and <laughs> that wasn't in the shot at all, was it? Oh, well. Yeah, so this is it. Um, hopefully it can take a 4790K at around 5 gigahertz. Um, I'll, I'll take you around the back quickly, just to show you what the whole thing looks like. Right? So yeah, there's really nothing here. There's just tubing. The two things are running in series. So water hits one of them, then water hits the other one. They don't run parallel or anything like that. It's nothing fancy. It's basically a radiator uh, replacement. And by comparison to a radiator, um, depending on what you are doing, I th this is kind of cheaper because those tech coolers, I got each of them for like 10 bucks. The, the Peltiers, the little modules that do all the cooling here. Um, I got each of them for like 10 bucks. The coolers, each of them is like 30 bucks. And the RAM blocks are like 50 bucks, I think. So yeah, this whole setup is in the couple hundred dollars range, which is about the same as a regular water cooler, which makes it a lot cheaper than phase change uh, water cooling. The only problem is this pulls a ton of power. This really does run on like 400 watts. And um, that's not that great. And we're already at 11 degrees. Well, it was at 11. There. Now it's at 11 again.
yeah, the temperature of the water. So yeah, I'll shut this off. I just wanted to show you what I've been doing recently. Um, I've also been working on the 78 USB, uh, 78 LMT USB 3.0 motherboard review. Um, that motherboard is disappointing in many ways, but, you know, it's not too bad. Um, it won't be getting an amazing score, that's for sure, but it's not the worst I've ever seen. It certainly won't break on you if you do something stupid, so that's good. It's definitely idiot-proof. I don't know how good it is, but definitely idiot-proof. And uh, yeah, so that's it for this video. Um, go check out the blog. The review for the motherboard will be there pretty soon. Um, there won't be anything about this chiller there, because honestly, I think that would make for a terrible article. There's not much to say about this. Um, I do want to try build a bigger one one day, um, say in the 600 watt range, and throw it on this thing, which I won't, because that thing is way beyond the power capabilities. But say an FX9590, I could cool one of those with a tech cooler. Those aren't that power hungry. <laughs> yeah, an FX9590 is less power hungry than this thing. Um, but yeah, and in other stuff, it's like I have a current clamp. So you can expect way more interesting articles from me because now I can actually measure more than 10 amps. So I can, I'm going to be putting out uh, quite a bit of stuff now. Um, also, don't forget, there's a stream this Saturday. I have liquid nitrogen. This one's going to be extra, extra long because liquid nitrogen is, um, the, the stream's going to be long because liquid nitrogen is hard to work with, to say the least. Um, and I've basically decided I'm going to do everything on video so that it sort of gives you an idea of what a uh, liquid nitrogen overclocking process would entail if you were to do it yourself. Because sure, it's cool when you see a video where it's like, D -d 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 -d, pour some nitrogen, record, yay. Um, but I'm going to go through it step by step, explain everything. And I'll be working with the 8320E, so 8 cores of FX. I only have 16 liters of liquid nitrogen, so I think I'm just going to go for CPU frequency, maybe super pi, some of those low core count ben benchmarks, because maybe sign bench at the end, towards the end, if I don't run out of nitrogen. But yeah, like, sign bench is hard for like CPU temperature and uh, on two consumption. Yeah, so don't miss that. I'm going to be starting at. I usually start at 6 p.m. GMT. I'm going to be starting at 4 p.m. GMT for that one. So that's 6 p.m. my time. So 6 p.m. Central Eastern, uh, Central European, uh, 4 p.m. GMT, and whatever else that is wherever you live. Um, of course, the stream will be up on YouTube after I finish it, um, but it will be very long. So if you don't want to miss it, be prepared that you're going to have to spend a like, you don't want to miss the whole thing, you're going to have to get a lot of free time on Saturday. So sorry if that screws with anybody's plans, but there is the video on demand on Twitch. There will be on YouTube. You can watch it there later. Um, YouTube even remembers where you stopped watching, so, you know, that's that. And see ya for today.